folks, a couple weeks ago, we put out a little contest that we got to 1,000 comments on a video. Whoever commented the most, I sent him a t-shirt, and it felt good. So I want to give some more stuff away. Just sent a t-shirt out uh, yesterday to Zachary Betcher, who commented nearly 400 times on a video uh, be two weeks ago tomorrow. And uh, that video got 6,500 comments on, which is uh, the second most in our company's history. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, approaching 22,000 subscribers need around 350 more to get there. So once we hit 22,000, I'm going to incentivize. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, if you have, either way, you're going to have a chance to get hooked up. Got the Michigan football uh, Jordan brand Nike shirt with a little, you know, Wolverine icon logo that we don't see a ton anymore for Michigan football. But I think it's pretty cool. I like the T-shirt. I uh, really like sending it to Zach, our winner from a couple weeks ago. So here's what we're going to do. When we hit 22,000 subscribers, so... We're getting, where, where are we at again, Sam? How much? Just uh, 326 away. I will pick one existing subscriber and one new subscriber. Now, don't unsubscribe and resubscribe because that'll show up on our on our database. So, uh, if you're new, you maybe have a little bit better of an odds. But if you are existing, I'll tell you what. The differentiator. I'm gonna try and scroll through people who are commenting a ton on today's video. So you don't have to comment a thousand times or anything like that. But you know, show us some extra love in the comments, and maybe you'll kind of pique our interest. When we're scrolling through trying to pick someone to give a T-shirt. So hoping to be able to give that T-shirt away by the end of the week, maybe after the Penn State game. Once we hit 22,000 subscribers, so we haven't yet. Here's an incentive to subscribe to the channel and if you have we're going to pick one of you guys to give away a michigan football t-shirt two of those coming as soon as we hit twenty-two thousand subscribers we are going to talk some transfer rumors uniforms for this weekend's game versus penn state and wild jj mccarthy stats that you guys need to know know about all coming up on the show right now Today's Michigan Football Report is sponsored by Mint Mobile. I switched to Mint Mobile a few months back, folks. I was paying hundreds with one of the legacy wireless carriers. Switched to Mint Mobile, you know, just paying dollars a month, right? Start plans starting as low as $15 a month. Mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Tell you a bit more about them later on in the show. Link down in the comments and the description of today's video. Okay. I have got three or four things to talk about today here on a Tuesday in what Outside of the opening game, which, you know, against uh, also ran group of five team, um, but nevertheless, opening game has a lot of excitement. I think this is the next most exciting week for this program so far this season after the opener. That's always an exciting game and probably Michigan State will have equal excitement despite them being a complete dumpster fire and then Ohio State later on in the year. So big time week for this show. We are going to talk about Adam Biggers. If you're not familiar with him. Welcome to the club because he's a complete nobody, but he's been in and around the Michigan football media, one of the least talented people I've ever uh, been around. He tried to be a YouTuber, Bleacher Report guy, etc. We're going to tell about him and, and the rumors, the preposterous things he's putting out there later on in the show. So if you want to hear me uh, on a little bit of rant, make sure you stick around for today's incomplete episode. But we're going to start off today's show with uniforms. I always love talking uniforms. And uh, my guy Swanky Wolverine, if you haven't talked about him, we actually missed up. It's uh, Swanky with a Y, nevertheless. Uh, I'll put the link to his Twitter account down in the comments. Swanky Wolverine on Twitter. He teased out uh, a couple times this year on Tuesday, Wednesday, heading into game week, what the uniforms will look like. And both times he has been correct. So I have no doubt the tweet that he put out late on Monday of the uh, of the uh, so look at Sam Brown behind the camera, best in the game, fixes it on the fly. Now we got the actual Twitter account in there. So thank you, Wolverine. He tweeted out this photo, right? 22 for the year 2022, all blue uniforms. Now, how are these different than the traditional Michigan all blues that were well, like traditional, the ones they rolled out three times last year, Washington, Ohio State, and then the college football playoff against Georgia. Well, if you notice, they've got the all blue sleeves and kind of shoulder sleeves and armbands and then all blue socks. Michigan wore kind of a version of this a few weeks ago against Maryland. It was the first time in program history that they actually wore May socks and had May's arms. So it really accented the entire uniform to be May's. Uh, this, you know, obviously outside of the, uh, of the blue jersey. This one, all blue. They didn't. If, I went back and looked at a bunch of pictures last year from Ohio State and Washington and Georgia. Some guys had blue socks on or blue armbands, but it wasn't uniform. And if what Swanky put out here about these is, uh, I feel that this indicates that if Michigan is in fact wearing these all blues, that uh, it will be sleeves, armbands, and socks, the complete blue head to toe, which would be pretty interesting to see for this one. Folks, I 
love the All Blues. When Michigan pulled them out against Washington last year, I said, look, it's a great change in pace, uh, kind of get people talking, get the players excited, right? And they they match, I think, the style and uh, and just tradition and uh, approach that the Michigan football program has had for years. I didn't like the you know kind of cartoony uniforms they had during the the Brady Hoke and the Rich Rod days, et cetera, et cetera. But I was hoping for all maze uniforms, right? In this game, it's a maze out. Last year, there was a rumor that Michigan wanted to wear uh, all maze on the road, asked Penn State for permission. Penn State denied it, so Michigan introduced the all maze sleeves kind of on the road, like we saw uh, the home version, they had the maze pants, white uniforms, white jerseys, and then maze everything. I think they even had maze uh, uh, shoelaces. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. I was hoping for all maze uniforms, or I was hoping you know, Michigan teased it out at a home game a couple weeks ago, or I was potentially hoping maybe this is the kind of time James Harbour gets crazy we might see for the first time ever the inverse. Maze tops, blue pants, but we have yet to uh, you know get any indication that that will happen. So these are the potential two options, I think, that Michigan may wear on Saturday. I'm going to trust Swanky Wolverine. That's the all blues or the blues everything. But I'm going to ask you guys this question. Toss it up on screen there. Which one of these uniforms would you prefer Michigan to wear? You know, you can pick one. Let's just say for this game on Saturday. Let's say it's a one-time thing against Penn State. And uh, maybe Michigan wants a little bit of revenge on that maze uh, issue last year. Go ahead and type M for maze if you wish they wear maze this Saturday against Penn State. Or if you like the all blues, that swanky Wolverine out there, put a B. Give me an M. Give me a B. Whichever you prefer down in the comments. I'd slide up the comments. If you see somebody disagreeing with you, they say maze, you like blue or vice versa, make sure you talk some trash to them and tell them why you are right. Derek Hutchinson, small fact, former Chat Sports intern, uh, now works for uh, M Live or one, you know, one of these local uh, TV stations. I can't remember, but uh, put out a pretty crazy stat. I fact checked it; it's true. Uh, pretty interesting. JJ McCarthy on Saturday, following his first interception, right uh, in the game, he tried to go deep to Ronnie Bell, kind of double coverage, tip ball interception, first turnover of the year for McCarthy. Uh, ten of ten. Now it it didn't feel like it in the time of the game, although Michigan did pass the ball better coming out of that, but 10 of 10, 104 yards and two touchdowns after that first interception. I'm going to tell you all about J.J. McCarthy here in a moment. Before we do, I want to tell you about another winner, and that is Mint Mobile. I switched to Mint Mobile about three, four months ago now, folks. I was paying hundreds with the same wireless carrier I've been with since I was like in my early 20s, and I didn't know what it felt like to have so much extra money in this inflationary economy, right? With Mint Mobile, you get unlimited talk and test text, high-speed data. You've got nationwide coverage. You can turn your phone into a mobile hotspot and plans. If you're a single person, plans are starting as low as $15 a month. If you want a family plan, super cheap there as well. Again, I was spending hundreds with one of the old wireless carriers that a lot of people have been with for years. They don't want to switch or anything like that. I felt it'd be too tough to switch. It'd be all kinds of challenges. You know what? I went, I took my existing iPhone. I went to Mint Mobile's website. They gave me a little passcode, went in, Transfer my phone number over, use eSIM. I don't have to get a new SIM card or anything like that. Use the eSIM process. Boom. I was active in a matter of minutes. Switch my old carrier to Mint Mobile. Have had zero issues. Go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Link is down in the comments and the description of today's video. Trust me on this one. Save 100 bucks plus a month. Use Mint Mobile. Don't be stuck with those legacy wireless carriers. I mess up that word. Legacy wireless carriers uh, paying you know, way too much money. Switch over to Mint Mobile. Mintmobile.com slash chat sports. So kind of taking a look at these stats, right? Putting putting them uh, you know, on paper, and it's awesome, right? JG McCarthy is off to a pretty impressive year. Now, I'm sure you were like I that hoping that he would put up 365 yards and throw 40 times a game and five touchdowns, like Ohio State's quarterback or Oklahoma's quarterbacks used to. Sorry, Sam, Oklahoma grad over there. Or we've seen Clemson, Alabama quarterbacks do over the years, LSU with Joe Burrow. But uh, what we saw in the second half and the first half, he threw 18 passes per half, um, went 15 of 18 in the second half, did have that one interception, but J.J. McCarthy is just completing passes. And I think in some regards, if we go, if if McCarthy is able to rekindle the flame he had with the long ball in the first game, maybe part of this, the second game that he had as a starter, this offense comes, I don't want to say unstoppable, but they certainly become uh, tough to stop, uh, right? You've got one of the two or three best running backs, if not the best running back in the country, with Blake Corum. McCarthy has certainly done a few things in the past couple of weeks. Um, he has learned to throw the ball away, check down, or not do those crazy triple spins like he did against the Maryland game, et cetera. Um, and 
he's gone deep at times. It's not been successful um, really in about three games so far. So if he can hit one or two of those deep balls, 40, 30, 40, 50 yards or longer, plus, you know, going underneath on 80 to 85% of his passes, anything within 15 yards, folks, how do you stop that as a defensive coordinator if you've got a tight end who's amongst the best in the country, uh, three, four wide receivers who can, you know, make plays underneath and potentially long, and then Blake Corum, Diamond Edwards. It becomes a pretty uh, wild thing to think about if that Michigan offense can perform at the peak of its potential, but I'll put the onus on the offensive coordinators, Sean Moore, Matt Weiss, and Jim Harbaugh, Give J.J. McCarthy, this Michigan offense, the opportunity to cook to the highest of their abilities. So answer this question for me on screen. How many passing yards will J.J. McCarthy have against Penn State? This Penn State secondary, folks, it is very, very good. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to make a you know, a Tuesday evening uh, guess. I'm going to say um, 227 yards is what I was going to say. Maybe it's, it's higher, but my hope is that Michigan gets the ball going on the ground against Penn State like they have many times in the past and just kind of, uh, you know, grinds them into oblivion and gets, uh, you know, a three-score win like I think a lot of people are expecting if everything goes right for this team. So far this year, J.J. McCarthy leading the nation in completion percentage now qualifies, right, the first three games, four games or so. He didn't throw enough passes to qualify for, uh, you know, NCAA stats. I think it's like 15 passes a game you have to make. But that's pretty – just look at those stats on the screen, right? There's two that stick out for me. He's not tearing it up with yards, right? Five starts, 1,200 yards. So, you know, 200 yards-ish a game, 225. The two on the screen that really stand out to me – 94 of 120. It's almost tough to comprehend, right? If you have 120 passes, you're kind of expecting, oh, maybe the guy throws 70, 70 complete, you know, 70 of 120. But it's 94. He's only thrown 26 incompletions this year. 78% completion percentage. Would be an NCAA record. We're halfway through the season, so who am I going to say that's not going to continue? Uh, pretty awesome to see. Kept it going 28 of 36 against uh, Indiana. The other one on the screen, nine touchdowns to one interception. I sure wish he would have 19 touchdowns, 15 touchdowns, 18, like C.J. Stroud, like Bryce Young, et cetera. But he doesn't, right? Blake Corum has got 11 touchdowns uh, this year. He's got the bulk of the uh, you know the stats right now. But if J.J. McCarthy keeps up 9-1 to touchdown-interception ratio, Michigan fans will be very happy with what uh, we see from him going on long-term throughout his career as a Michigan football quarterback. All right. Adam Biggers, world-class loser. Right? Why do I know he's a world-class loser? Number one, if anything, he just is a guy who gives up, right? Uh, former Bleacher Report guy. We'll go through his background in a second. We investigate, right? We did a deep dive on Adam Biggers. But I want to make sure you guys all understand what we're dealing with, what the situation that kind of transpired last night and this morning on social media. Adam Biggers, right? No one wants to hire him, but he still wants to be a Michigan football reporter. Per my source, right? His, his mind, little cuckoo. Cade is done at Michigan, getting healthy, and will transfer. So, The way you read that, done at Michigan, is that Cade McNamara, whether he's healthy or not, and we've speculated that there was some expectation he would be healthy by this game, by Penn State game, um, he's not going to come back, right? He's just going to be done at Michigan uh, and will transfer. The transfer part is not surprising, right? I think anyone with a brain could say, okay, Cade McNamara – Right, lost a starting job, was a a Big Ten championship quarterback. He'll find somewhere to go. He'll go to the Big 12. He'll go to the Pac-12. He'll have a starting job next year somewhere in college football, have a chance to go to the NFL, won't sit behind Gigi McCarthy for two or three years. That's that's not going to happen, right? So Gary McNamara from the top rope, boom! Give me one of those, all right? Share your source, Adam and Biggers. Is he was just in in uh, you know clean up on aisle nine mode. He was like, Gary, you have my cell phone number. I DM'd it to you. Call me right now. I'll tell you I can't out my source, Gary. Please don't call me. Loser. And he was just you know uh, Biggers was getting dunked on left and right because. He's just trying to get some sort of legitimacy. No one with a brain would say, oh, yeah, oh, Cade McNamara is going to stick around for Michigan for the next two years, fight J.J. McCarthy for the battle. We all know where it's going. Gary McNamara, come from the top rope, boom, just dominating Adam Biggers is great to see. So who is this guy, Adam Biggers, right? Longtime bleacher reporter. He's like a high school janitor for about six, seven years out of, out of college or something like that. Assistant softball coach plus janitor. Uh, was working with Bleacher Report, right, for free for like seven years. Then got a job for one year with the Flint Journal and got a media credential too. Got to go to a couple of Jim Harbaugh press conferences. And he literally still brags about it. This is like six years ago. He's still bragging that one time Jim Harbaugh said my name in a press conference. Um, 
But he got a one-year deal, which is commonplace in media sometimes. They say, okay, prove yourself. What are you going to do? They didn't renew his deal because he has no talent. They tried to be like a YouTuber, try to compete with us. We're getting ten to 20,000 viewers per uh, per video. Adam Biggers, literally 200 viewers, 300 viewers. Guy's a complete schmuck. And then look at him. I think I, I feel bad at this point kind of dogging on him because he's had a rough go of it. Um, he called me for a job a few years back. We didn't uh, have any interest in it. But – the guy looks unhealthy, right? Look at those eyes. They're sunken in. Uh, he was bragging yesterday on Twitter after people were saying how much of a bum he was. He was bragging about his 2007 Cadillac CTS, and people were fighting pictures of him on Facebook, of, like leaning on the car, taking photos. Like all-time weird behavior. The guy is 38, 39 years old, living at home with two dogs, and uh, you know, was bragging about his 07, 08 Cadillac CTS. Wild existence. Very strange behavior. Is he okay? I don't know. I hope he's okay, and this is just him trying to get some sort of legitimacy, but I'm hoping it's not some sort of cry for help. All right, folks. Biggers has got to get our wrath. It is Flash Mob Tuesday. We actually forgot about it last week. Uh, we had to throw you know some things together, so I apologize for not putting out Flash Mob Tuesday last week. Appreciate everyone who's done it, but go to this tweet. It is linked right at the bottom, kind of after the first paragraph. I've linked it down below uh, the the video in the description and down in the comments. So go down there, click on it on Twitter, and type delete your account. Reply to Biggers and just say delete your account. I like to see 30, 40, 50 of you guys say delete your account because I am one who dives into the rumor mill, but I don't do so unless I know that it is sourced multiple times or if not, it's like directly like it's someone who is literally at the same house as someone like an injury something like that and I've been pretty good I have a really good track record with it missed once or twice uh, throughout the years um, and I don't just try and point out wildly obvious things so if K McNamara comes back and is in uniform for Michigan uh, Adam Biggers might as well delete his account then because he'll look like a complete liar so let's get ahead of it just tell him to delete his account now go down in the description in the comments find that tweet click on it Adam Biggers 81 but go to this actual tweet and type delete your account just so he knows that uh, we don't put up with uh, guys who are just trying to get back into the game with wild speculative rumors. One last question to uh, wrap up today's show. Uh, then I'm going to tell you about the t-shirt giveaway here as well. Which was the better team? Which is the better team potentially? Last year's 2021 team, this year's 2022 team. We all know the star power of last year, right? Hassan Haskins, Daxon Hill, David Ajabo, Aiden Hutchinson, some others, right? Um, but man, this 2022 team, um, even with the cupcake schedule and everything, uh, they're looking pretty exciting. We're going to find out a lot about them against Penn State, of course, at the end of the year against Michigan or Ohio State, and in between against Michigan State. Absolutely cannot lose that game. But go to type 2021 or 2022 and make your case as to why. I want to kind of figure out where the pulse of the fan base is going into this top 10 matchup against Penn State. One more reminder, giving away two t-shirts. So you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Click the big subscribe button below the video. If you forgot about it, come back. YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. Just subscribe before we hit 22,000 because that's the cutoff, right? If you're 22,001, well, can't help. You can't get a t-shirt, whatever it is. And for existing subscribers, we're going to give one of each. New and existing, one of these uh, Jordan brand Nike t-shirts with a little Wolverine uh, icon logo. Um, sent one out today to uh, to my guy whose name I'm uh, forgetting at the top of my head. Yeah, Zach Petcher. Yeah, Zach Petcher. Sorry about that. Um, so we'll give one subscriber uh, T-shirt and then one new existing and one new. I've got the full list of existing, so don't try and unsubscribe. Resubscribe doesn't work that well. But want to give these uh, T-shirts away. Hopefully we can do it by Sunday after the Michigan Penn State game. We will be back tomorrow with some Michigan football injury updates that you won't want to miss. Until then, go blue.